Okay, so uh, in this video, I would like to find the Galois group of uh, this polynomial. And uh, we're gonna find its Galois group over the finite field F3. We're gonna use some properties of finite fields to do this. So the uh, first thing that I'm gonna claim about this polynomial is that it's uh, irreducible. And um, we're gonna show that in the following way. So the first thing about this polynomial f of x is that it doesn't have any roots in f3. And it's easy to check that. Um, how do you check it? Well, f of zero, we can just plug numbers in, would be zero plus zero plus two. So that's two, which is not equal to zero in f3. Um, furthermore, f of one, so this would be one to the fourth plus one plus two, which is equal to one in f3. So not zero, okay, and uh, f of two, uh, what would this be? Well, it would be uh, 16, which modulo three is equal to one um, plus two plus two. So this becomes uh, two in f3, which is not zero. So this polynomial indeed uh, does not have any roots in f3. Um, however, classic mistake, um, does that mean the polynomial is irreducible? It does not, and that's because this is a degree four polynomial. So if it was degree two or degree three, you would just need to check that it doesn't have any roots, and that would mean that it's irreducible. Um, but in this case, it's degree four, and so we have to deal with another uh, case here. And that other case is what if f of x is a product of two uh, quadratic polynomials, which um, we is something that we haven't ruled out yet. So this might still be true. So maybe there are numbers uh, a, b, c, d, e, and f in f3, okay, such that this uh, factorization is true. Um, so f of x doesn't have any linear factors, but it, maybe it has two quadratic ones. So let's see what this would mean. So f of x is x to the fourth, remember, plus x plus two. And um, if you literally just distribute this, so there's other ways to do this, but you can just uh, directly um, see what's happening by distributing everything out. So you can see that the x to the fourth term here is coming from a times d. That's where that coefficient is coming from. So that has to be equal to one. Um, so I'm comparing coefficients on both sides. Um, the coefficient of x squared on this side is zero. So that would mean that a times f plus uh, c times d plus b times e, okay, is zero. Uh, furthermore, there is no x squared term on this side either. Um, sorry, there's no x to the third term on this side. Uh, so that means that a times e plus uh, b times d um, is equal to zero. Um, right, because if you multiply this by this, you get an x cubed. If you multiply this by this, you get an x cubed. So I'm just doing this with all the different powers of x. Um, for the linear ones, I could do bx uh, times f, or I could do c times ex. So that means that uh, bf plus ce is zero, uh, is one, sorry. Um, and then finally, I know that c times f is two. Okay, so these are all of the things that I know by comparing coefficients. So if c times f is 2, again, we're in um, f3, we're in a finite field. Um, and so the only way that this happens is if uh, c is equal to 1 and f is equal to 2. Um, and it could be the other way around, but without loss of generality, let's just say that c is 1 and f is 2. Okay. Um, furthermore, the fact that a times d equals 1 tells us that a is equal to d um, because that's the only way that a, d could equal 1 in f3. 
So these are the things that we know so far. Um, now looking at this equation right here, the fact that a is equal to d uh, means that we can rewrite this as ae plus ab being equal to 0, because um, again, a is equal to d. And so this means that a times b plus e, that that's equal to 0 as well. Now, um, if a was equal to 0, this would mean that um, ad couldn't be equal to 1. So we know that a is not equal to 0. And so that tells us from this part right here that b plus e is equal to 0, or that b is equal to 2 times e. All right, so we're narrowing in on a contradiction here. Uh, if we now take this equation right here, and let's substitute in uh, some of the things that we know so far. So we know without loss of generality that f is 2. So instead of a times f, we can write 2a. Similarly, we know c is 1. So here I can just write plus d. And then I know that b is equal to 2e, so here I can just put 2e squared. And I know that that's equal to 0. Um, so that's great, but also I know that a is equal to d, right? So this is equal to a right here. And so this is just 2a plus 1a, which is 0. And so really this tells me that 2e squared is equal to 0, OK? Now, um, the only way that 2e squared can be equal to 0 is if e is equal to 0. So now, from the fact that b is equal to 2e, I know that b and e are both 0. Great. So remember the original goal. So the original thing we were doing is we assumed that f of x factored into linear factors, or sorry, quadratic factors. Um, and we just showed that the linear coefficients in each of those um, are equal to 0. And we also showed that one of the coefficients, so this coefficient is uh, 2. Um, sorry, this, this coefficient is 1. And then we showed that this coefficient is equal to 2. So we showed that if f of x factors into quadratic factors, um, then uh, they have to look like this. And we also know... Uh, that a is equal to d, which we'll use in a second. Um, but so all we really have to notice here, remember f of x was um, x to the fourth plus x plus 2. But if you FOIL this out, um, you get a polynomial with an x term with coefficient equal to 0. So this is a contradiction. Um, so this shows directly that f of x can't factor into quadratic factors, um, and therefore f of x must be irreducible. Okay, so this was a lot of work, and um, we're still just trying to figure out what the Galois group is. But now that we know that this is irreducible, that's going to be pretty easy. Um, so all we have to do is uh, adjoin a root of f of x to f3, uh, and any root will do. So let's say that alpha is, is a root of uh, f of x. Again, we just showed that f of x is, in fact, an irreducible polynomial. Um, and so this has to be an extension of f3 whose degree is equal to the degree of f. So this is automatically a degree 4 extension of f3. And so that forces it to be f81, right? Because it's a degree 4 extension of a finite field with three elements. So the number of elements in the extension has to be 3 to the fourth equals 81. Um, However, more is true, so it's easy to work with uh, finite fields for things like this um, because uh, every finite extension of a finite field 
um, is cyclic. Okay, so this is, or is, is in fact Galois. So this is actually a uh, Galois extension. And uh, its Galois group is generated by the uh, Frobenius automorphism, uh, which is the map that sends uh, alpha to alpha to the third. Uh, in fact, if you have uh, any element of F81x, um, x maps to x to the third. So this is an F3 linear automorphism on F81, um, and it generates the Galois group. Um, so everything is generated by this. Uh, however, we also know that if you have a Galois automorphism, um, it has to map uh, a root of f to another root of f. Um, so that means that the roots of f are automatically alpha, alpha to the third, alpha to the ninth, alpha to the 27th. So these have to be all of the roots of f. So we're kind of going backwards here, right? Because sometimes you know what the roots of a polynomial are before you find the Galois group or before you find the splitting field. And knowing the roots helps you find the automorphisms. In this case, um, if you have a finite field that's an extension of another finite field, you automatically know what the Galois automorphisms are. Um, and, you know, because F is the minimal polynomial of alpha, that kind of just forces all of these to be the roots of F. Um, so it's kind of like the reverse of the reasoning that you might use for other Galois groups. Um, but so in short, that means that the Galois group um, of F uh, over F3 is equal to uh, C4. So it's the cyclic group of order four. Um, and that um, is the end of the exercise. Thanks very much for watching.